Hey everyone, Chris Lopez here, and I'm recording this in early December, and this is one of my most favorite topics to do, where I get to talk about goal setting, to help people go out there and achieve their goals, and also share my goals. And you know, something I've learned about goal setting over the many years I've done it is that it's like half art and half science. There's a lot of power to sitting down and writing your goals and being intentional and talking about them. But there's also the art aspect about it where you need to you know, be accepting as to what changes in the marketplace. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but what we can count on is change. And it's how do you adapt your goals with that change uh, you know, in your life and in the market. And this year with the you know, big spike in interest rates is one of those years where there was a lot of change. So I think it's a great time as usual at the end of the year to sit down, review your goals and look at your goals for the next year. But even taking a bigger step back from that, when we do have these big market shifts, because we are leaving the era of you know low interest rates, high appreciation, and now I probably got a couple of years of uh, you know lower appreciation and higher interest rates as we shift in this new market. So it's a great time to sit down and just reevaluate not just your goals for next year, but you know the longer term goals and also your whole portfolio and rebalancing it. So uh, with all that said, we are working on the 2023 guide to Colorado real estate investing strategies. Every year, we publish a book that is crowdsourced by investors who are investing in Colorado to write their strategy and have it published in the book. So this will be our fifth year, and we are collecting them by uh, about middle of January, I think January 15th, with the goal of publishing a book by about mid-April. So everyone's welcome to contribute. It's free. The more, the merrier. We had 40 people last year. I want more than 40 people this year. So please go click in the show notes, look at the uh, chapter submissions, and then submit your chapter. Any questions, reach out to me. Now, kind of taking a step back and talking about my goals. And I, know, I, I have so much fun reviewing my goals uh, for the previous year. And there's two main ways I do it. One is I read my chapter in the previous book. That is like my polished public version of the goals. And then the second uh, thing I do is in my office wall, in the, the podcast studio wall, I've got uh, a, a, a wall section where I do like three by two giant sticky notes. And I'll just do, you know, big goal planning in there. And it's much more chaotic, uh, inspirational, and bigger picture. And I break it things down into quarterly. So I spent a couple weeks. So I spent a couple hours where I read my chapter here and then went through about 18 months worth of giant sticky notes. And it was always impressive to see what came to fruition, what didn't, and what things changed. And, oh, that was a goal? Wow. Okay. Things changed. Or, wow, that was a silly idea now that I go back and look at it. But that's part of the process. So going to my goals for 2022, specifically for investing, I wrote down my goal as to go out there and buy two rental properties. I did not accomplish this. Uh, what happened here was I had everything with my taxes ready to go by like March except for 1K1 that didn't get back to me until like the very last week in September, October. And I got my tax returns on in October then. Well, by then the market had shifted, interest rates have jumped. And you know, aside from being more conservative, just in general investing, I'm also in real estate as a business. So I went extra conservative. Um, and so I did not deploy all the cash in those rentals. And so based on not wanting to put all that cash out and also just change the marketplace, I shifted some of that money over to passive investments. Uh, I did a couple in Ironton Capital with uh, the NDA5 and the Samuel Drive. And I view those, I'm still buying rentals and buying investment properties just in a different form. But with everything that changed, that was the right fit for me the last you know, six months of 2022. Uh, another goal I wrote down was to continue doing some passive investing my 401k. I did that. I did uh, two investments this year through my 401k uh, with Verico and one of their apartment funds and also a deal in Des Moines. Another goal I wrote down was to uh, not necessarily buy, but make good progress and put a plan together for buying an office building for Envision Advisors. Well, um, did not accomplish that. And that goal was crossed off the list. Bought an office building last year. And what I've realized with buying an office building, we're also going to put your company. Um, it's a very hard balancing act because you really have two needs there or two masters, I like to think about it. 
what does the business need? And that can change around location, space, size, you know, what it needs for just space and all that. And that needs to be generally be very flexible, especially for me and the way I op operate. The second thing is, you know, from an investment standpoint, what's the best investment for that dollar? And trying to find an office space that's a great investment and also a great fit for business, I realized is a, a very hard thing to do. And I think there's a highly higher likelihood of kind of being mediocre in both, which is not a good recipe. So that goal um, has changed. I don't have it anymore. But as I was talking about this, uh, something that Lon Welsh pointed out was that um, he said that you're right, Chris, but you got to think bigger. If you buy a big enough office building, then you have a scale where you can truly do it. And he was telling me this while we we're sitting at sitting at the, the office building he owns on Locust Street, which is where my podcast studio is and the Your Castle building or offices. And so that type of scale. So, you know, that goal shifted, uh, but making it towards a goal of buying an office building to use no longer uh, a top priority. Another goal was to contribute to my health savings account. Got that accomplished, which I'm always happy to do. And then uh, something else that happened during this uh, year as interest rates went up was finding a better place to put my park cash. For the last, I mean, geez, five, eight years, I've just always kept things in savings account because nothing paid any interest. Well, now that interest rates have gone up, there's different options out there. So I ended up moving some cash to I-bonds because they are giving some great returns right now. And then into some short-term uh, short -term income fund, which is a, a debt fund with Ironton Capital. So getting some uh, yield and cash flow on those. So those are like the main goals I wrote down for my investments in 2022. So I accomplished some, some changed, and others I did not accomplish. That's fine. So before I go with my goals, understand that's part of the process. I used to beat myself up when I didn't achieve goals. I see other people doing the same thing. It's fine. Deal with it. Just accept it. That's part of the science and art project. Now, be realistic and hold yourself accountable. But if something changes due to your circumstance or the market, don't beat yourself up over it is my mindset currently. And so as I look into going into 2023 and setting those goals, going from looking in the rearview mirror, now looking forward, um, you know, I always like to kind of readjust as to what is the best for my life? Because as I get older and now I have two kids, I'm all about, hey, what's the, the best use of my time and how can I balance all these different uh, goals I'm accomplishing in my life? And so I'm looking to 2023 with where I am in my life. I got a three-year-old, a five-year-old, and I'm also very active in building businesses like building Envision, building the media company, helping Ironton Capital and launching that. Like I love being an operator in the business world, in the real estate space, but my strength and passion not go out there and being like an operator in terms of real estate. Like I get way more enjoyment and make a better return on my time doing like business operations and business growth than we're going out there and spending all that time in, you know, hunting for deals and active real estate. And that's just a combination of my skill set and what I'm good at. So I'm definitely going with that mindset looking in 2023 that I like to be more of a hands-off investor and more the finance that, hey, where can I place my capital with, you know, the minimal amount of work on my time to earn it the best return? So I am that fits me, and that's the lens I'm looking through as I talk about my 2023 goals. So I'm going to talk about my investment goals, and i also talk about some business goals. So with investments, uh, I'm definitely going to stay more conservative than usual, which means just sitting on more cash um, and investing less money overall, because while the market changes, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to get wealthy in 20 or 30 years if we don't lose something along the way in year two and three. So I want to make sure I can still be a, play offense but I can have a bunch of cash to play defense. Uh, my goal is to buy one directly owned rental. My expectation is that will probably be in the second half of next year. And while I think there's some really good opportunities in the market right now as we're shifting in the market uh, to, to go out there and buy some good rentals, that's just not the phase I'm in where I want to go out there and look for a value-add deal, go in there and spend a bunch of time to rehab it and find a, a place to go add value. So I am forecasting the second half of next year and more of a turnkey type asset. I uh, want to continue doing some passive investing as well. I like the idea of in buying rental properties every year and doing passive investing. So the passive, I'll do some after-tax stuff and then some more stuff with my 401k. So that's it really for my investing goals. Um, some other smaller ones of you know, saving money, contribute to my health savings account, but those are kind of standard ones. Those are my main investing goals for real estate and are going to move the needle on my wealth creation. 
Now moving towards my business goals, and I said, this is where like I spend the majority of my bandwidth, my time, my energy. And I think it's very important for people to realize where they wanna spend that because there's no right or wrong way to invest. It's about what's the right fit for you. And I often see people saying, wow, this person did all this on bigger pockets, or wow, I saw this deal this person got. Well, yeah, they did that because they spend 50 hours a week finding those deals. If you can't do that, that's fine as well. So I think it's a very good thing for people to always come back and ground themselves and make sure their goals are playing to their strengths and interests. And with that said, my active bandwidth, the majority of my time and bandwidth goes towards you know the businesses in the real estate space because I love doing it. I think we do a very good job providing value. So I won't go into every detail on here, um, but as I've talked business uh, growth over the years, I've had a lot of people interested in just talking shop. I've had a lot of people interested in come working with us or utilizing some of the services we do at companies. So I will be doing a much more detailed uh, webinar and just outline very soon regarding that. So be on the lookout for that. If the business side piques your interest, file that away or reach out to me and I'll get you the link when it's ready to go. Uh, but from a high level, I'm really focused on how can I go out there and continue to do a lot of client education. I love the education space when it comes to investing. And the area I, I gravitate towards more and more every year is that long-term wealth building strategy, which is why we have Property Llama. And we talk about how, what do you do with all these pro, you know, properties that you own the last five, six, seven years? Like that space on how to use real estate investing for a long-term wealth building is the, is the space I love. So doing you know, more education around that, you know, the podcast, the webinars, and getting to meet a lot more people that have a lot of experience and, and you know, decades and decades of building wealth through real estate. I love learning from them, applying it to my own situation, helping others do it as well. So that's a big part of the focus I like to spend on the business side of things, which then leads to all sorts of results. It leads to new clients, it leads to new opportunities, it leads to some really great investment opportunities as well. But that's like what I enjoy the most, and that's what trickles down to a lot of the businesses. So for Envision Advisors, want to add one to three more agents in 2023, and that is really based on geography and niches. So if you're an agent out there, definitely reach out. We're always looking to add a couple of talented people, but we need people that bring value to the table as well. Don't want new agents, and you got to bring some value to the table. So geographic expansion in Colorado and some other types of investment niches is what we're really looking at into. Uh, Curtis Street Media. I can't believe that it was about a year ago that uh, I think it actually became an official LLC and right around middle of December, it became a real business. Uh, it's felt like we've been building it for five years. And I don't mean that in a bad way. We just have grown so much from about three people. Now it's about a team of uh, 13, maybe 14 or 15 now. Uh, that has grown tremendously. And that's really what does a lot of like the, you know, drives education, drives connecting people, helps to drive deals and just network at scale. So I'm very excited to continue uh, growing that. And there's a lot of behind the scenes uh, stuff that Curtis Street Media is working on and launching. Property Llama, that's our real estate investing software. And I'm recording this a couple weeks after we finished up our portfolio analysis mastermind 2.0 which was a great success. We had like 600 and some people uh, register for it altogether, which blew my mind. Uh, so uh, thank you to everyone that joined us on that. Very appreciative of it. But also it kind of validated all the final stuff we're looking for in terms of like what we needed, direction to go with Property Llama. So I want to continue to scale that. And we're going to be doing some official launches in quarter one next year with testing out to... Um, first round of people use it in January, February, March. And these are people outside of like my network and Envision Advisors. So we can go out there and start taking a national scale. And then, you know, down the road as we grow it, um, we'll probably go on and take some investors on to it so we can go out there and really scale it up. Um, but we're not at that point yet as we can bootstrap that business and as the essential tool for what we're doing as well. But absolutely loving Property Llama. I want to grow that. Ironton Capital. Like this was uh, one of the very interesting things when I went back and looked at all my goals, you know, iron and capital, passive investing uh, in terms of business, none of that was on my goals list. Uh, but what happened was come about April of 2022, uh, Lon had, uh, you know, started Iron and Capital or, or was in the very early stages of starting Iron and Capital. Uh, we connected. He was like, hey, would you like to help out with this? I was like, absolutely. Any chance to get to work with Lon in investing, 
or business. He's brilliant at both. It is an absolute no brainer. I was like, wow, I can invest with you in what you're doing law and also be in business with you. Yes, please sign me up. Let's go. And so that's been the very uh, fun business to launch this year. Uh, very successful as well. And we want to continue growing that. And I really uh, now getting a more complete picture of long-term wealth building and just understanding more investments out there. I just love uh, having like, you know, directly owned rentals and passive investing. They are so complementary and like each play a very important role in building a robust real estate portfolio. I'm having fun using them myself, but also helping clients understand the opportunities and helping them use those uh, services or products or investments in their portfolio. And a couple other things with those businesses is really building out the human advisory side. We started doing a lot of the portfolio analysis sessions with a lot of the people that came through PAM 2.0. And the other realization with PAM 2.0 is that we have to go out there and have some type of human advisory element to go out there and support people. So we're actively building out an advisory network or starting to plan for that and also building out uh, a function because I see Property Llama being a great tool for agents to use in their business to help their clients, building out a lot of education for agents and lenders to help their clients uh, go out there and you know help their clients achieve success in the uh, real estate investment space. Those are the main business goals there. If you want more details, uh, check out this webinar. It'll be coming out sometime soon, probably earlier mid-January. If I don't have a link in the show notes, email me and I'll get you the details. With that said, I appreciate you listening to the podcast. I appreciate you being in the community this year, whether you're in the podcast uh, network, you've been a client of ours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love interacting with all the investors around town. Uh, I truly enjoy it and you know, continue growing with people and goal setting, I find fascinating. So this is my last call to action in this podcast to get you to contribute a chapter to the 2023 Colorado Real Estate Investing Guide. I would love everyone to write a chapter and contribute in here. I'm a big fan of it because writing things publicly and then sharing it helps hold me accountable. And I enjoy reading other people's strategies. And I also enjoy helping people reach their goals and be successful. So please write a chapter. Everyone's welcome. The details are in the show notes. If you have any questions regarding investing, writing a chapter, business growth, anything I can help you out at all, please reach out to me. I'm always very grateful to the investing community and always love connecting with people. With all that said, have fun goal setting. Please write a chapter and absolutely crush it in 2023.